In this video, we're going to do the free worksheets within Infinite Algebra 1 on the Kudo Software website, and we're going to work on two-step equations. We're going to do numbers 1 through 12 in this first video, and then follow up in a second video with numbers 13 through 24. Our directions are to solve each equation. Solving the equation, again, like in the previous video, solving one-step equations, we need to isolate this variable a so that we know what it's equal to. By isolating it, we will have a equals some quantity or some quantity is equal to a. Now, when solving two-step equations, it's important to remember the order of operations. PEMDAS, parentheses first, then exponents, then multiplication and division, and then addition and subtraction. So on the left-hand side, we have six. Six equals the right-hand side, which is a divided by four plus two. Remembering the order of operations, this a has to be divided by the four before you add two. So we're going to reverse that and remove the two and send it over to the other side by subtracting a two to start. So subtracting two from both sides, because remember, whatever we do to the right, we do to the left and vice versa. So six minus two is four, and that's equal to a over four, two minus two is zero. So a divided by four plus zero. A divided by four plus zero is just a divided by four. So this is four equals a divided by four. Now we're left with multiplying by four to both sides. That way we'll have a times one or a divided by one, which will give us a and four times four is 16. So for number one, 16 equals a. Let's move on to the second problem. I'm going to show you two ways to do number two. Let's go ahead and start by moving the negative six to the other side. We do that by adding six to both sides. So we'll have x over four equals negative five plus six is a positive one. Our next step would be to multiply both sides by four. And that's going to give us x is equal to one times four, which is four. Now let me go ahead and show you the other way you could also do this. Let's go ahead and multiply by four. If we do that, we're going to have to multiply both sides by four, but we're multiplying this e entire quantity. So the four gets multiplied to the negative six plus the x over four, which is equal to negative five times four. So we're going to distribute. Four gets multiplied to the negative six, and then four gets multiplied by x divided by four. Four times negative six is going to give us a negative 24, plus when you multiply four by x over four, then you're going to have one x, so you're gonna be left with x, and then that's equal to negative five times four which is negative 20. Now it's down to a one-step equation. We're just going to add a positive 24 to both sides since subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive. And that's going to leave us with x equal to a positive four. Either way leads you to the correct solution. However, I find it easier to do the method we used on the left-hand side. That way we don't have to worry about doing the distributive property. But either way is okay, so feel free to choose. Number three, we have 9x minus 7 equals a negative 7. 9x minus 7 is the same as saying 9x plus a negative 7, so I'm going to move that over to the other side so that we'll be left with 9x equal to some quantity. Adding a negative, so if we subtract the negative, it's the same as adding a positive, so we're going to add 7 to both sides, we're going to be left with 9x plus 0 is equal to 0. 
9x plus 0 is 9x, and that is equal to 0. Then, just like a one-step equation, we just have to divide by 9 to get x by itself, and we'll have that x is equal to 0. 0 is equivalent to 4 plus n over 5. I'm going to start by subtracting 4 from both sides. 0 minus 4 is a negative 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. So we're going to be left with 0 plus n over 5. So this is negative 4 is equal to n over 5. My next step will be to multiply both sides by 5. Doing this on the left side, we'll get negative 20. And on the right side, 5 divided by 5 will be 1. So we're going to be left with n times 1 or n divided by 1. And this is simply n. So negative 20 is equal to n. Number 5, I'm going to add 5 to both sides. Negative 4 plus 5 is a positive 1. And this will be r divided by 20 plus 0 which is r over 20. Then, our next step is to multiply by positive 20. Or you can think of this as multiplying by 20 over 1, if you want to see it in fraction form. 20 times 1 is 20, and we'll be left with r over 1, which is simply r. So 20 is equal to r. Moving on to number 6, we have negative 1, equals 5 plus x over 6. Now remember, the fraction bar separates the numerator from the denominator, so we're going to have to add in parentheses to this equation. Now remembering the order operations, parentheses comes before multiplication or division when solving. However, we don't know what this value of x is. We're trying to isolate it, so let's go ahead and work backwards since we know that the 5 has to be added to the x at the very start, and then eventually it will be divided by 6. So we're going to start by multiplying both sides by 6. So that'll be 6 times negative 1, which is negative 6. And multiplying by 6 is the same as multiplying by 6 over 1. So you'll see that 6 divided by 6 will be 1, so we'd be left with 5 plus x over 1, which is 5 plus x. So we'll have negative 6 is equal to 5 plus x. So now it's a one-step equation. We're just going to subtract 5 from both sides, and we'll have that negative 11 is equal to x. Number 7, we have a fraction bar again, so we're going to insert our parentheses. So v plus 9 occurs first. We're going to have to cancel out this 3 and move it to the other side of the equation in order to have v plus 9 by itself. And once v plus 9 is by itself on one side, we no longer need the parentheses there, just as we did in number 6. So we're going to start by multiplying both sides by 3 over 1, or positive 3. So the 3's 3 divided by 3 is 1, so we're left with v plus 9 over 1. That is simply v plus 9. 8 times 3 is 24. And now we no longer need the parentheses, so we'll just subtract 9 now from both sides, and we'll be left with v equal to a positive 15. For number 8, we have parentheses. Now there's two ways to do this. We can go ahead and distribute this 2 to get 2n plus 10 and then subtract the 10 and then divide by 2. Or we can start by dividing by 2 initially. Since the 2 is multiplied by both n and 5, we're able to remove that 2 from both. So divide both sides by 2. 2 divided by 2 will be 1. So we're going to be left with n plus 5 equals a negative 1. Then we're going to subtract 5 from both sides to get n equal to negative 6. 
Number 9, we have negative 9x plus 1 equals negative 80. Subtract 1 from both sides, so I have negative 9x equals negative 81. Then we're going to divide by negative 9 to get that x isolated. That's going to leave us with x equal to negative 81 divided by negative 9 is a positive 9, since a negative divided by a negative is a positive. Number 10, negative 6 equals n divided by 2 minus 10. We're going to start by adding 10 to both sides. Negative 6 plus 10 is a positive 4. So 4 is equal to n over 2. Multiply both sides by a positive 2 over 1, which is the same as multiplying by a whole number 2, since 2 over 1 is equivalent to 2. And that's going to leave us with 8 is equal to n. Number 11, negative 2 equals 2 plus b over 4. So if we subtract 2 from both sides, 2 minus 2 is 0, negative 2 minus 2 is a negative 4. So negative 4 equals v over 4. Then we're going to multiply by 4 over 1. Four times negative four is a negative 16, and that's equal to v over one, which is v. So negative 16 equals v. And on to the last problem in this video. 144 equals negative 12 times x plus five. x plus five are in parentheses, so we're going to start by dividing by that negative 12. When we divide by that negative 12, we'll have x plus five by itself on one side of the equation, and we're going to have a negative 12 on the other side. Then we're able to subtract five from both sides to get that negative 17 equals x. Go ahead, give me a thumbs up on this video if you found it helpful, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, go through my tutorials for a more in-depth explanation of how to solve not only one step, but two step equations. And join me for the next video where we're going to finish out this worksheet.